بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد سورة المسد is a Meccan surah by consensus it was revealed in the very early part of the mission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some said the second or the third year of the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the name of the surah is uh, Al-Masad or Tabbat and it was revealed after Al-Fatiha and before Surah Al-Takwir. The reason for revelation uh, is as reported uh, by Al-Bukhari and Muslim and Nasa'i and Ahmed and others uh, on the authority of uh, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha and other companions. When Allah Azza wa Jal revealed his saying, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ and warn, O Muhammad, the closest of your kinfolks. The Prophet ﷺ, upon receiving this revelation, he ascended Mount As-Safa, and he placed his fingers into his ears and called aloud, saying, Ya Sabaha. Ya Sabaha is an expression the Arabs used to warn against something. And usually against an attack of the enemy who's either attacking them in the morning part or at night. So the Prophet ﷺ ascended uh, Mount As-Safa and placed his fingers and called aloud. So the Quraysh became alarmed. So they rushed to him and they said, what's wrong with you? Now, this is a, a method of attracting attention. He is warning them. He's using a known expression to warn them against something that is, that could be deadly. So he asked them, if I was to tell you that an enemy is behind this mountain who is planning to attack you in the morning part or in the evening, would you believe me? What was the response? They said, we never experienced you to lie ever. Meaning, we believe you. And this is actually in one of the narrations they said, indeed, we believe you. Or we would believe you. At that, the Prophet ﷺ said, <coughs> I am a, warning to, uh, a warner to you before the arrival of a severe punishment. I am warning you, you need to adhere before a severe punishment arrives and strikes you all. And then he وسلم, started naming tribes by name and then individuals by name, saying, O Quraysh, save yourselves from the fire. I have no control, I have I can save you not. With, your, with Allah Azza wa Jalla. I have no control over anything. I cannot protect you from Allah's punishment. Then he said, O oh, people of the tribe of Ka'b, O oh, people of the tribe of Murrah. And he started naming other tribes, Abdu Shams, Abdu Manaf, until he reached his grandfathers, O oh, people of Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib is his grandfather. And in each time he would say, protect yourselves, guard yourselves from the fire. Until he finished and then he started calling the clans of Quraysh one by one. And then he said, Ya Fatima bintu Muhammad. O Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad. Ya Abbas. O Abbas, the uncle of Muhammad. His paternal uncle. Ya Safiya, Safiya is also his paternal aunt. Protect yourselves from the fire. I cannot protect you from Allah. 
I can give you anything from my wealth. You can ask me for that and I will give you. But I cannot protect you against the punishment of Allah. The only thing I can do is that and maintain ties between me, the ties between me and you because you're my kinship. At that moment, Abu Lahab, the cursed Abu Lahab, or a cursed Abu Lahab, stood up and said, Tabbalak. May you be destroyed or may you be perished. Is this why you call this? Is this the reason why you summoned us all and made all of this? So Allah Azza wa Jal used the same word. He said, Tabbalak to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah sent, Tabbat yada abi lahabi wa tab. So it was revealed. Tabbat is uh, either a supplication against him to be ruined and to perish and be destroyed or informing that this has already taken place that he's already ruined and destroyed Abu Lahab who is this Abu Lahab? Abu Lahab is, is not his name his name is Abdul Uzza or Abdul Uzza. Abu Lahab is a nickname. Lahab is, in Arabic, means flame. Right? And it was, uh, it was said that he was given this name because he had a bright face with red cheeks like a flame. He was very attractive and handsome as a man. Right? But who is this Abu Lahab? He is one of ten uncles of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ had ten uncles, four of whom were alive when he was uh, sent as a messenger ﷺ. Al-Abbas and Hamza, Abu Talib and Abu Lahab. Two of whom became Muslim, Hamza and Al-Abbas. Hamza is his age, ﷺ. And Abu Talib, did not, but was very protective of the Prophet ﷺ and very supportive of him. And Abu Lahab was the last uncle who is the most vicious enemy of Muhammad ﷺ and his message. ﷺ. As a matter of fact, two of his sons were married to two of the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ. When Muhammad ﷺ was sent as a messenger, he, Abu Lahab, commanded his sons to divorce the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, uh, he was one of the leaders of Quraysh. Of course, he comes from one of the two main tribes. Hashim, Banu Hashim, is one of the elite in Mecca. One of the senior tribes of Mecca. So he had a very high social status as a person and was a person to whom people listened and adhered. Tariq uh, ibn Abdullah, and this is reported by Ibn Habban, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, rahimahullah. He said, I uh, went into the market of Dhul Majaz one day before he became Muslim radiallahu anhu. And I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressing people saying, O oh people, say la ilaha illallah, you will succeed. Say la ilaha illallah, you will succeed. And someone was behind him, throwing rocks at him until his feet started bleeding, telling people, don't listen to him, he's a liar. He said, so I went and asked some people, who's this man? They said, this is his paternal uncle, Abu Lahab. Now let me pause for a second here and say something 
that I heard some of the scholars or the people of knowledge uh, mention about the miraculous aspect of this verse. Allah is saying that this man is ruined. Tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab. And later we will see that he, Allah Azza wa Jal, is saying he's destined to hell. This man could have ruined the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by lying and saying, I believe. By being a hypocrite and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, this would have ruined the message of the Prophet sallallahu because his Quran is saying this man is going to hell. And this man saying, is saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But Allah Azza wa Jal did not even enable him to do as little as this, lying and being a hypocrite. ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب. His wealth will not avail him or that which he gained. That which he gained, the scholar said, is referring to his uh, children. And other scholars said, it's referring to his relationship to the Prophet Sallallahu being the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this surah proves as well as the narration of the Al-Bukhari and Muslim, which is the, re the reason for the revelation, proves that your lineage has no benefit. It will not avail you of anything. It's only in akramakum indallahi atqakum, the most honorable amongst you with Allah are those who are the most pious. This is the scale that will decide who goes where. Not being the son of a king, a son of a president, a son of a scholar. None of that matters. On the day of judgment, we will be naked and deeds will be the decisive point after the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will enter to burn in a fire of blazing flame. So after Tabbat in this life, after him, him becoming ruined and destroyed in this life by Tabbat, in the hereafter, he will enter into a blazing fire. And his wife as well will burn in a fire, the carrier of firewood. His wife is Ummu Jamil, Arwa bint Harb. She is the sister of Abu Sufya. And she as well was a very attractive woman. And she uh, descended from the tribe of Banu Umayyah which is the second honorable parallel to Banu Hashim from whom Abu Lahab descends. So this couple, as a couple, were very strong socially. Their stas status was very high. They were very influential amongst people and they were neighbors to the Prophet this uh, Ummu Jamil used to uh, carry on her back thorns, tie them and put them on her back, and go and place them in the path where the Prophet Sallallahu would, would be passing. You know, at night, at that time, there were no lights, right? It's only the, the light of the moon. People didn't have, didn't have mobiles with a flashlight or no street lights, none, none of that. So you would walk. So she used to place thorns in the path of the Prophet ﷺ to harm him. ﷺ. Uh, another interpretation of the carrier of firewood, the Arabs would use this to refer to someone who slanders, backbites, and tail bears people. And she used to do the very thing against Muhammad. Uh, 
في جيدها حبل من مسد around her neck is a rope of twisted fiber the same rope the same rope she used to carry these thorns to place in the path of the Prophet ﷺ will be placed around her neck in the fire of hell as a form of punishment and she'll be surrounded with fire. Asma radiallahu anha said that when this surah was revealed Ummu Jamil came screaming you know, the surah is talking about, particularly, talking about her and her husband. It's telling people that these people are destroyed in this life and uh, will be punished in the fire of hell in the hereafter. So it's none but them, these two. Subhanallah. So she lost her mind. How can Muhammad wasallam, talk about me and my husband? We are such a... Lofty status, social rank, all of that doesn't matter. But they had no minds to think. Someone who worships a, an idol made out of date and when, when he or she gets hungry, they eat it, they have no mind, no brains. These are brainless people. So she came screaming and she had a rock that's uh, that's, that was big enough that it filled her hand. She came carrying this to hit the Prophet ﷺ with it. And he ﷺ was sitting in the Kaaba with Abu Bakr. So when Abu Bakr saw her approaching, she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, here comes Umm Jamil. She is an abusive, vulgar woman. I fear she might harm you. Seeing that big rock in her hand. So the Prophet ﷺ said about this indecent woman. He said, she's not going to see me. Don't worry about it. Because Abu Bakr was telling him, leave. He said, no, she's not going to see me. And then he recited some Qur'an. As Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ حِجَابًا مَسْتُورًا And when you recite the Qur'an, we place between you and those who do not believe in the hereafter a concealed barrier. So she came up until she stood on top of the head of Abu Bakr, who was sitting right next to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said to him, I heard that your companion, not seeing him, is talking ill about me and my husband. He said, no. She, she said, he's talking ill about me and my husband in the form of poetry, which is called Al-Hija in, in Arabic. He said, he, he doesn't do that. He doesn't know how to do that. Uh, she said, if he was present, I would have smashed his head with this rock. And then she turned around, and as she was leaving, she said, Quraysh knows that I am the daughter of their master, Banu Umayyah. We said these were the masters, Banu Hashim and Banu Umayyah, in, in the form of tribes. So, Abu Bakr turned to the Prophet ﷺ after she left and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, she didn't see you. He said, No, an angel came and placed his wing in front of me and she couldn't see me until she left. He continued to, to uh, put his wing uh, so she wouldn't see me. Uh, this surah, and this is by the way reported by uh, Al-Hakim ibn Hibban and uh, Ahmed and others, and it was classified as uh, authentic by Al-Albani and Al-Arna'ut and other scholars. Now, 
you know when 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 you're attacked and uh, you get an immediate support protecting you and defending you it makes you feel energized it motivates you to become firm and steadfast Allah Azza wa Jal if you notice through different surahs Allah Azza wa Jal was taking very good care of the Prophet Sallallahu and especially his feelings and emotions his, his morale and his companions those who had believed at that time were very few and they were it was the the, the hidden part of the da'wah no one could dare uh, openly announce that they have believed so when someone as influential and as indecent and evil as this couple is challenged by Muhammad sallallahu and yet Allah Azza wa brings down this protection to Muhammad sallallahu this defense to Muhammad sallallahu it no doubt made feet firm and steadfastness stronger to the Prophet sallallahu and the companions radiyallahu anhum and with this we will conclude wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin subhanak allahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu